find all possible integers x, y, z greater than or equal to 0 that are solutions to the equation x plus y plus z is equal to m where m is a positive integer. Now this problem is I'd say it's a slightly harder problem uh, that I actually saw back in days when I was at high school and honestly at that stage I had no clue how to solve these problems. But later on I learned that these kind of problems are actually quite common in combinatorics and sometimes they're also referred to as stars and bars problem. So here today I'm going to discuss a solution that's a little bit different from the ones that you usually found find on the internet uh, on problems like these. And like I said, this is a you know well-known class of problems. But I thought it would be just interesting to show a solution which is you know perhaps easier to understand and it just presents a, a different approach to solving such problems. And the approach that I'm going to be showing here is a recursive approach, uh, which I'll explain just in a minute. So we are given to find, uh, you know, the number of solutions to a three variable equation, x plus y plus z equal to m, m is a positive integer. And here we're just looking for all possible non-negative integer solutions. So what I will do is I'll start this problem uh, by simplifying it one level. So what about if I'm given just two variables, x and y, and uh, x, I, x, and x plus y is equal to n, suppose, where n is a positive integer, and I'm trying to you know, find how many possible non-negative integer solutions exist to this uh, particular equation. So what would be my approach? Well, I'll first start with the list of values that x can take. And of course, we know that x and y are both positive integers. Now, the ease of this two variable problem is the moment I assign an integer value to x, y is automatically determined because my equation uh, still needs to satisfy x plus y is equal to n. So suppose I say x is equal to 0, then y becomes equal to capital N. If x is equal to 1, y becomes equal to n minus 1 and so on. So all I need to do is just go through the possible values that x can take and, and y is automatically constrained. So I don't even need to worry about y. So these are obviously the, the list of potential non-negative integer values that x can take. It can go all the way from 0, 1 through n. And that would be a total of n plus 1 values. And for each such value x takes, there is a one solution for x and y, right? So, so together, we have n plus 1 solutions for the simpler two-variable equation. Now, let's come to the problem that has been asked, which is a three-variable equation here. So just as we approach the two-variable problem, if we assign a value to the third variable z here, say let's say z is equal to zero, because we know that, that we are just looking for non-negative integers solutions only. So the, so the lowest value that z can take is zero, right? So if z is equal to zero, so the set of solutions that we now need to find must satisfy x plus y is equal to m. And we kind of already solved that problem previously, right? So we know that an equation x plus y is equal to m can have a total of m plus 1 non-negative integer solutions. Just going by the previous two-variable problem that I 
showed or that I started with. So now for z equal to 0 or z equal to 0, we have a total of m plus 1 solutions. So what about z equal to 1? Now x plus y is equal to m minus 1. And again, uh, you know, going by the, the first uh, simpler two-variable problem that I established, this one would have m solutions. So it's m minus 1 plus 1. That gives us m. And similarly, we can start, you know, thinking about all the values, all the potential non-negative integer values that z can take, which runs all the way through m minus 1, actually through m. So if it's m minus 1, then the equation for x plus y becomes uh, x plus y equal to 1, which would have two solutions. And then uh, z can take a value of m as well, for which the solution uh, that we're looking for is x plus y equal to 0, which would have only one solution. So, so z can take any value from uh, 0 through m, and these are the number of solutions that we have for you know, x, y, and z for, for each of those cases for z. So the total number of solutions uh, to this problem can be simply found by summing up all of these solutions. So we add 1 plus 2 plus, you know, all the way till m plus 1. Now, this is, you know, visibly a, an AP series. So it starts with 1, uh, so then we have 2, a 3, and so on. So it's an AP series starting with 1 as the first term, and the common difference is just 1. So it's kind of the sum of the first, uh, you know, a certain number of uh, first m plus 1, uh, consecutive uh, uh, integers, starting with one, and there's a formula for that, and this this is simple to derive. It's just an arithmetic progression, sum of an arithmetic progression. So if you uh, take the sum of n consecutive integers starting with one, the sum is n uh, multiplied by n plus one divided by two. Uh, here n is equal to m plus one, so that's kind of the you know the formula that we can substitute or we can take help of to. To, to evaluate this expression. And that comes as m plus 1 multiplied by m plus 2 divided by 2. So that would be uh, the answer to this question. Now, I always like to you know, test uh, whether this is really the accurate uh, number of solutions. Uh, so I'll start, I'll, I'll rather demonstrate that whether this is truly the, the, the answer or not by taking a you know, simple value of m. So let's say m is equal to 3. I'm taking a smaller value of m because then manually I can, you know, almost find all the non-negative integer solutions to this. It's relatively simple. Uh, and if I plug in 3 for m, uh, going by that expression of m plus 1 multiplied by m plus 2 divided by 2, there should be a total of 10 uh, potential non-negative integer solutions. Now let's check whether this is true or not. So if x plus y plus z equal to 3, what are the different uh, non-integer, or sorry, non-negative integer values that x and y and z can take? So this is kind of that list over here. And if I count, it comes to 10. Now, one thing that I'd like to explain is the approach that I just used to, to obtaining the solution is what's called a recursive approach. So recursive approach means that you basically involve repetition of a previous solution uh, to obtain subsequent solutions. And uh, I can generalize uh, you know, this recursive approach for this particular problem by saying that if S small n capital N represents the number of non-negative integer solutions uh, to this small n variable problem, where I have you know sum of small n number of quantities equ equaling n. And remember, I'm again looking for non-negative integer solutions. Then if the number of variables becomes small n plus 1, right, then the number of solutions to that could be simply expressed as this sum. So I'm basically, you know, invoking the same solution 
assuming that I know what S is, I can, you know, go on to apply S in finding the number of solutions as the number of variables becomes, uh, you know, greater. And of course, here, uh, I know what S1N is, so that's equal to 1. And then I also know what S2N is, so that's N plus 1. So in this way, if I'm given a three-variable problem, I can solve it. If, I can, if I'm given a four-variable problem, I can solve it, and so on. So this is a recursive approach, and it's often used in mathematics and computer science. And, and one way of doing this is if I'm to write a computer program that can generate you know, or the number of non-negative non integer solutions to an n-variable problem like this, then I can potentially write a, a program uh, that's recursive, you know, using uh, the, the same concept, and, and that can help me evaluate the number of possible solutions.